So welcome to the final show of 2015. This has been an amazing year on the art of photography, and I feel like the community aspect of it has been what has been so special to me. There's a lot of really neat things that are coming up in 2016 that I can't wait to get to. The artist series is in progress, and we should start filming on that in the next couple weeks, and I'm really excited about some of the things that are coming up. And of course, that entire thing was made possible with funding from you guys, and I just want to say thanks again for that. I really appreciate it. And for the last show of the year today, I want to do something that I don't normally do on here, but uh, somebody suggested that I do a recap of my top 10 favorite books of this year. And as most of you know, I do a lot of book reviews on this show. Um, photography monographs, I think, are so important to learning, to the appreciation of photography, and to really, they represent a lot of my passion, and that's why I like to share so many of those here on the show. So this was hard to whittle down to 10. Um, there's a lot of books that I bought this year, and I want to say that not all of these books were published this year, um, and that's very important to note. These were just books that came into my collection this year. And some of them I've shared on the show with you guys and some of them I haven't. So let's get right down to it. So this is my top 10 picks of my favorite books for 2015. So in no particular order here, I'm just going to go through these. Uh, my first pick is Magnum Contact Sheets, which is a really special book. This is one I did an entire show on earlier this year. And Contact Sheets are fascinating to me. And what they've done with this book is they've taken some very well-known photos by Magnum photographers. And you get to see the contact sheets and all the selects and everything that was on the film roll as you go through here. And what's really amazing to me about this, and just I think it's something that is really special about the era of when everybody used film for for photo journalism is that you get to see something that's very personal that goes into the making of a photograph or the final select. You get to see the thought process and the creative process behind the image in a lot of cases. And you typically, on you know, with a lot of these, you'll see variations of the image that could have been selected. You'll see variations in exposure and just trying to get things just right. And being able to study somebody's contact sheets, uh, it's not often that you get to do that. A lot of artists are very protective of something like that because it shows that process and it's a little like looking through somebody's underwear drawer sometimes I suppose but um, it, this book is so well done and it is highly recommended. I think of all these books just from a learning standpoint um, if you're into photojournalism or street photography this is absolutely essential to your collection. Next up is a monograph by Louis Farr and Louis Farr is a more obscure photographer but he was part of um, what we've come to know in the last 10 to 20 years is this rediscovery of New York street photographers in the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, so he was a contemporary of Saul Leiter. Uh, Richard Pousset Dart is another gentleman that I did a show on earlier this year. Louis Farr is amazing. And it's really interesting that at the time, this was, you know, it was a collective of photographers who did a large amount of personal work. And they were just photographing New York in that era. And these photos are absolutely wonderful in here. This is not an expensive book. Um, and even for an obscure photographer, he has such a wonderful style of personalizing images and just doing some wonderful things. And this is really well done. So that is my second pick is Louis Farr. My third pick is From Uncertain to Blue. And this is a book that I have not featured on the show before, but I have featured the photographer Keith Carter before. Keith is one of my favorite photographers. I think he is one of the more important living photographers today. And this is an early book of his. This was actually a gift that I got for my birthday this year uh, from my parents. So it was special in that regard too. But From Uncertain to Blue um, is, as I mentioned, an early work. And so a lot of the things that we know now in Keith's style, um, some of the whimsical nature and some of the mystical nature. These are more straight ahead raw images. So you're not going to see uh, much that's moving in more of an artistic direction or a conceptual direction in these so much. But the whole story behind this book, and it's really wonderful, is that uh, Keith and his wife at one point decided to go on a trip and they were considering exotic locations. And of course, Keith lives in Texas. And they were looking at a map one day and kind of realizing how funny a lot of little Texas towns that the naming is. And so they decided to plot out all these funky named Texas towns and actually do a road trip. And it, I think it lasted actually several years uh, where they would come and go from the road trip. But Uncertain is the name of a town in Texas and so is Blue. And some of the stories that unravel, and as Keith mentions in this book and in the, in the notes, that it was really more difficult than he imagined that it would be to shoot because you go out there and there's 
no landscape that Ansel Adams would go after. There's no, uh, you know, street photography like you'd find in New York, that this was a very different landscape that was very Texas in nature. But, you know, Keith is a fan of the mysticism and the magic that comes from Texas uh, as a state, and that is represented in this book. And it's a very early work. And I think the other reason I am so fascinated with this book is if you have followed Keith throughout his career, he is one of those rare artists who continues to evolve. He doesn't land on one thing and then just continue to produce that the rest of his career. He actually, every set of images is a little bit different and moving in a different direction on what he did before. And his images that he's doing today are completely different than this. But I think this is a wonderful insight into Keith's work and this is just such a beautiful book. So From Uncertain to Blue by Keith Carter. My fourth pick is Builder Levy's monograph, Builder Levy Photographer. And Builder is a really interesting photographer. He's somebody that I have not really talked about on the show much before. Uh, this is a book that I recently was given. And he is amazing. Um, he's probably best known, if you have seen his work, for a series of images that he did in Appalachia. And he has a very interesting style um, that is very street photography in nature. Um, I think it's more social documentary, you probably want to call it. And he has this wonderful way of capturing humanity. And he has several books out, and there is a book just specifically on the Appalachia Project. But what I really love about this book is it also covers other locations as well as Appalachia. So you see some images from New York, there's some images from Mongolia, and also from Cuba. And I think it's interesting because when you have a photographer that is probably best known and associated with a certain place or a certain style of imagery, and when you see how that adapts itself to other cultures and other civilizations as well, these great horse images that are in here. And Builder's a wonderful photographer, and I will talk more about him coming up in 2016, and I really recommend this book. The Appalachia book is fabulous as well, um, but I'm picking this one because I think it just shows a little bit more diversity. I love this image on the cover with this flock of birds going over the top. Uh, brilliant photographer and um, I think he's one of the important greats. Next up is a book that I didn't know about until fairly recently um, when somebody tweeted that they had purchased this and I got very interested. And I have talked about Alexei Titorenko on the show before. This book is his new book. It's called The City is a Novel. And Alexei is an extremely important photographer. He's in his mid-50s. Um, he was born and raised in Russia and lives in New York now, but um, the work that I was familiar with of his was done in the mid-90s and is absolutely brilliant. And I've showed you guys a lot of those images on the show and like the, the image on the cover here with this um, group going up the staircase, which kind of evokes this black smoke to it. And he does a lot of these long-timed exposures and he really is comfortable with long exposures and a lot of his work is evocative of that in some way, shape, or form. And so uh, this one also has some newer images as well, which is why it's a big pick of mine and there's some images from Havana in here which is interesting that I was just talking about Builder Levy as well from Venice also New York City and you see in all of these images you know this this whole idea of time and motion blur and people moving through the images and so it gives the it, it's almost like treating the street as like a movie set in a way and when you see these ghost-like apparitions of blurry people moving through them it creates a way of telling a story that's very unique and very original, and I absolutely love Tedarenko's work, and I highly recommend The City is a Novel. Of course, most of you know that I have talked about Chris McCaw quite a bit this year. He was involved in an exhibition that I saw at the Getty earlier this year on contemporary photographers and pushing the envelope of what the medium will do. And Chris McCaw is amazing. Uh, he's a California-based photographer. And if you haven't seen his work before, I will link that episode up in the show notes. He works with these really huge homemade cameras and shoots large format onto photographic paper. And his whole technique involves these really long exposures of capturing the sun in motion. And so literally what will happen is the same effect that you get from a magnifying glass when you are able to like actually create fire and burn a hole in something. That's what the lens does to the paper. So as the sun moves, and it's really hard to tell from a reprint, uh, you have to see these in person. It actually physically burns a hole into the medium and it also has this solarization effect. So if you shot straight to photographic paper, it would come out as a negative. And what happens is when it's exposed to the sun this long and it uses older expired papers, it does have a solarization effect where it kind of starts splitting into a positive as well. Chris is an amazing photographer. Um, he is well known professionally as a palladium printer as well. And I think the world of Chris. And so Sunburn um, is still available as far as I know. Uh, just came out, I believe, this year and it is a fabulous book. 
Number seven is a book that is very special because this one comes from somebody who watches the show, and this is my friend David Brookover. And David is a beautiful photographer. Uh, he lives and works in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He shoots landscapes, and he owns a gallery there, and I believe another one in Santa Fe. And what I love about David's work, and I did a whole show on this, which I will link up in the show description as well, but you don't get rehashed Ansel Adams in here. His work is very unique, it's very original, it's very beautifully done. Um, I love his interpretation of landscape and then the other thing that's just utterly impressive is his whole um, talent for printing and what you're able to see here and you know shooting these like these snowscapes and I mentioned this when I when I did a show on this earlier this year um, you know this is kind of something that we see Michael kind of doing a lot of and he doesn't copy Kenna he does his own thing and I I think David is an absolutely fabulous and underrated photographer and uh, his approach to shooting the American landscape is very original, it's very unique, and it is so well done, and I really think the world of David. So um, this is David's book, it's called The Road. I actually have two copies of this. This is the um, the black covered version, and then I have a red one that's a clamshell version as well that I showed, and so I'll link up to that episode as well. Next up is Rothko Sugimoto, and this is a book that I covered earlier this year, but I found this to be so fascinating. This was an exhibition that Pace Gallery in New York did, and it was a combination of Rothko's black paintings mixed with um, Hiroshi Sugimoto seascapes. And so it's a really interesting comparison between the two. And you have two people who are not of the same generation, but did very similar work in a minimalist style. So this is one of the Rothko black paintings where you see basically the horizon in the middle. And of course this pairs up so beautifully with, with Sugimoto seascapes. And there is some text in here that talks about uh, the fact that Sugimoto wasn't exactly influenced by Rothko, although he did appreciate his work. But there is such a beauty in seeing the correlation between this black era of paintings and then Sugimoto's work, which is uh, very typically out of focus landscape work, and then this entire series that he did years ago with seascapes. And there are hundreds of these photos where he shot all these variations with the horizon right down the middle. And if you're into minimalist work and you're into the, the relationship between photography and painting between two of probably the greatest living artists of all time, uh, Hiroshi Sugimoto and Rock Mark, Mark Rothko, easy for me to say, um, I highly recommend this book. My ninth pick is Heinrich Kuhn's The Perfect Photograph. And I've talked about Kuhn on the show several times. He is normally associated with the pictorialist movement. And Kuhn's work um, is very unique in that he worked quite a bit in a process known is autochrome, which you see on this image on the front. And autochrome was one of the first commercially available color processes. Uh, these were glass plates that you would purchase um, that were made essentially with potato starch um, that used a dot pattern to create different basic fields of color. And so it has a really interesting look to it. The grain is absolutely beautiful in these images. Uh, he worked extensively with autochrome, so there's an enormous amount of photographs that exist. And they all kind of have this surrealistic look to them. Some of them have this strange swirl to them and you know the way the blur works in that but also the the way the color saturate is very unique to this process it's interesting because after covering Heinrich Kuhn on the show um, I've had more people email and ask me if is there a way to do autochrome today I think it's something that has a really interesting look to it unfortunately it's really not it required a pretty intense mechanical process to actually make the uh, make the plates and so it's something that's a bit of a lost process but as you can see in Kuhn's work it is absolutely intensely amazing. Um, what's interesting is I remember the first time I saw some of Kuhn's prints in person um, was a couple of years ago when there was an exhibition at Howard Greenberg Gallery in New York and it was there were some black and white pieces in the show as well and some of the materials they were printed on like Japanese tissue paper it was just it was alternative process it was vintage photography and it just all came together in this amazing way so anyway that is my pick for Heinrich Kuhn the perfect photograph number 10 is Saul Leiter's early black and white which was published by Steidel in association with Howard Greenberg Gallery and they've done several volumes of books together um, the first was Saul Leiter's early color book that came out several years ago. The second in the series is Saul Leiter Early Black and White, which is actually a two-volume set. Volume one is called Interior, and the second book is called Exterior, and they deal with that exactly. It's interior photos in the first and outdoor shots in the second. Saul Leiter is one of the most important photographers uh, in the street style uh, in New York City of capturing that moment in time in the 1950s through uh, Saul shot up into the 1980s. Um, was pretty obscure most of his life until 
Greenberg discovered um, an exhibition of his work and really brought him to the public attention. Saul Leiter is fabulous. I've covered him on the show many times, and I think this book is an absolute essential to have. Uh, Steidel are doing some really important work in terms of publishing monographs, and I think that the, their work is outstanding, but particularly this combination of Howard Greenberg working with Steidel. Uh, the next in the series, as I've heard, is going to be a book on Sid Grossman, who is also representative of that time, and another name that's a little more obscure today. He was a photographer and activist in the 1950s um, who was responsible largely for the Photo League, and also because of his interest in communism, caught the eye of the federal government, and that created problems for both him and his career. But anyway, um, Saul Leiter's Early Black and White is absolutely essential. I know I said 10 books, but I don't think this would be complete without an 11th, so here's your one to grow on. Um, this would be Henri Cartier-Bresson's The Decisive Moment, which I think is one of my favorite books that I've run across. And I did a whole show on this a few weeks back, and so I'll let you check that out if you're interested in seeing specifics on this book. But what's interesting is I have seen some criticism on the print quality, and I think the print quality is outstanding here. What you have to realize is this is a reissue that Steidel did, and it is a reissue of a book that came out many, many years ago. So the printing quality quality that they went for in here actually mimics the type of print quality that you would have on the original versions. And so I think for that reason, I think it's very important as a historical document, and it is absolutely fantastic. And it contains images that you can find in a lot of different places, but to have this book just as a work of art on its own, in fact, in many ways, there were some problems with the original editions with this, with the glue letting up, and they actually would come apart. And so to have a really good quality version of this, I think is amazing. And Henri Cartier Bresson, obviously, probably one of the great street photographers, uh, photojournalists in existence, and uh, this is an absolutely fantastic reissue of his book. Of course, it comes with, with notes and a whole behind the scenes, so if you're interested from a historical perspective, and I think if you're only going to buy one book this year, I think this is definitely a classic. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. If you guys are interested in book publishing or have even considered doing a monograph of your own work, you might want to check out our sponsor this week, who are the awesome folks over at lynda.com. Linda Lynda.com have one of the most extensive online libraries of training tutorials that you're going to find anywhere. And if you're interested in learning more about publishing your own book through a service like Blurb, or if you're interested in Adobe InDesign or Illustrator and how to make your images look amazing in print, Lynda are probably the place to check out. And they have a deal for Art of Photography viewers right now where you can get 10 days of free unlimited access to the entire website. What you want to do is use a special link. You want to use lynda.com slash AOP. That is lynda with a Y dot com slash AOP that lets Linda know I sent you and that will give you a 10-day free unlimited trial to the entire website. So go learn something new. I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the folks at lynda.com for once again sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. That was my top 10 book picks plus one for 2015 and this was actually kind of difficult to do because I wanted to include some of the greatest hits of things that we've talked about already this year but I also wanted to include a couple things that I haven't shown yet to give you a little bit of a taste of what's coming up in 2016. We're going do a lot of photo lit episodes that are coming up I'm very excited about plus we have the whole artist series uh, which is made possible thanks to the generosity of you guys so I'm really excited as we fire that up in the next few weeks the last thing I want to mention today is my friend Sarah Dietschy who I talked about on this show a few months ago as an extremely talented photographer and filmmaker and all-around creative person and she came over to the studio earlier this week and we spent a day working on filming for her creative spaces series and I'm really excited and honored to be a part of that. And she talks a lot about that in her latest vlog post that she did. And so I will link to that wherever you guys are watching this. Look for it in the show description or up here. And uh, anyway, go check that out. She's got a couple little uh, teasers in there. And I'm really excited to have been a part of this. And Sarah is absolutely wonderful. And uh, I can't wait to see what she comes up with this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe so you'll be up to date on all the awesome things that we're going to be doing here in the new year. Until the next video and until 2016, I'll see you guys later.